Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a two-time NCAA national champion on our University of Hawaii men's volleyball team. He is Demetrius Mukleus, and today we are going beyond national championships. Hey, Demi, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hello, Rusty. Thanks for the invite. Dimmy, you have become one of the best college volleyball players in the entire United States. Now, I want to ask you, you're from Greece. What were some reasons why you chose the University of Hawaii? Uh, so the main reason for me was that I wanted to get a degree uh, because, you know, life and like sports in general is not going to last forever. So I need to have a plan after I'm done with volleyball. And uh, then I heard about, you know, the whole process in the United States with the college and you combine both sports and uh, school. So that was uh, the main reason for me. Now, what were you studying at the University of Hawaii? I am studying kinesiology and uh, rehab science. Now, what, what interests you about those, those topics? I would say it's because I'm an athlete and... Uh, you know, I, I learn things about my body and injuries so that I can prevent them mostly. That's, what, that's the most interesting thing for me. Uh, that's so important because so many people, they, they focus on certain things, but they have to really prevent injuries from happening. Uh, otherwise, that causes some major setbacks. And Demi, Coach Charlie Wade has created a superior culture of excellence. I mean, your team bond is incredible. It's like your team is your second family, right? It is. That is true. That is true. We are so close with each other, you, uh, with the guys from the team. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it helps a lot when we play together too, like during the games, like having people next to you that you know, that they're your best friends. And I, it makes the, this whole feeling amazing. Now, you have an extra special relationship with Speedos Hakas. You both are from Greece. I want to know, what are, what are some details about why you guys have such that extra special relationship with each other? So, me and Speedos first met when we were 13 or 14 years old. Uh, we were uh, playing for the national team together, and we were friends since then. Uh, and then I remember before I even came, came to Hawaii, I was uh, studying for my SAT exams during the, the national team. We had a tour. Like, what, what, what are you studying? And I told him, oh, I'm going to Hawaii and I got to take the SAT exam. And uh, he, was, he was interested since then. And uh, I, I talked to him. Uh, I told him how to reach out and uh, talk to coaches. And uh, now we're both here. Wow, you know, the I was there on senior night. I mean, it was so emotional. It was so touching to see how close all of you guys are. I mean, you yeah. were getting so emotional. Um, another another one of your teammates that was getting emotional was Guilherme Voss. And yeah. tell me about why Voss is such a great team player. He's, he's a great team player. Uh, me and uh, Guilherme came here together four years ago. We were in the same class. And uh, we basically grew up as volleyball players in this program. And uh, we've been seeing each other every day, every single day at practice, at weight, at treatment. So it's normal for us to feel sad about leaving all these people because uh, we've been together for four years. And all of a sudden, you have to leave and move on. So that, that's why it was really emotional. And how, how was it feeling in that arena, a sold out arena with all of the fans staying for the senior night festivities afterwards? How did that make you feel? 
uh, it made it even worse from one point because seeing all these faces, all the fans, all the aunties, and knowing that I have to leave after this year and I have to say goodbye to all these people, it just made me really, really sad. Now, Demi, Galloway, Hoagland, they're solid players. And of course, Jakob Tella. Tell me, tell me some of the reasons why Jakob Tella is such a great uh, team player as a setter and as a leader. Okay, uh, I would say because he communicates with his teammates a lot. I remember uh, last year when me and Jakob were first starting playing together, uh, we were talking a lot about how we're going to play, what kind of set he, he prefers to send me, and what kind of set do I want. And we were adjusting things all the time. And I believe, uh, I'm sure that he does it with all the players in our team too. That's why we are so successful. Well, I had Jakob on my show, and um, he uh, he's such a great person. I mean, all of you guys have such great character, and I think that's really the essence of why so much of our community really support you guys. And, you know, how, how important is character to the success of your team? It is. It is really important. I believe it's the most important thing to have good personalities in a team. Uh, and I think our coach Charlie Wade did an amazing job in the past years to recruit the right people for the right positions in order to succeed. And uh, yeah, hats off to him. Now, Demi, take me through what a typical uh, week would be like for you guys at practice. Okay, so uh, we lift uh, three times per week usually at 7.30 in the morning. And then uh, Monday through Friday, we have classes from 8.30 a.m. Well, it can be all the way up to 3 p.m. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we practice hard the first days of the week, Monday through Thursday, I would say. And then if you have a game on uh, Friday or Saturday, we just take Thursday a little bit you know, easier. But yeah, it's mostly like school and practice. That's uh, that's our, that's been our lives for the past years, and uh, yeah. Now, when you guys are at practice, how long are the practices for, and what is the intensity level like? So, uh, if we try to save some energy, you know, the day before the game, it can be up to an hour, an hour thirty minutes, uh, because we we need to feel good about. It for the game tomorrow. But uh, when we don't have a game, we can go up to three hours and the intensity is really high. Uh, our coach, Milan Zarkovic, is looks like he's always in a rush. Like he, he tries to do everything as, as fast as possible. So it can be really intense. Well, I know what you mean about Coach Milan. And, and I mean, Coach Charlie yeah. has, has such a great staff. I mean, Coach Milan is absolutely terrific. And Coach... Cupono now. What what do you admire about C Coach Cupono? Yeah, Coach Charlie has done a great job on selecting the staff. So he chose a European coach that can transfer his knowledge of European volleyball to the team, and then he he hired an assistant coach that played professionally in Italy, one of the best leagues in the world, that can transfer his knowledge about the volleyball game to us. So that's. That's, that's that's great. He helps us a lot. And Cupono really, really knows about volleyball. And uh, I've seen him talking to our outside hitters about passing a lot. And I talked to Chaz and Spiros. And they were like, yeah, he helped us a lot this year. He, he, he's really nice. Uh, it, it's really a total team effort. I, I can see um, how the coaches really care, not just you know, for your, you know, to build you guys as great volleyball players, but as people. And for me, when I was coaching, my top priority as coach was to develop champion athletes of character first and then great tennis players second. And I can see that that's really what your coaches are doing. And Demi, I want to ask you about um, Ryan Tanaka. He, he did 
a book donation of both of my books to Coach Charlie and the other coaches and every player on your Hawaii men's volleyball team. And uh, Jakob was sharing that you guys have the books in the locker room as well. And what are some things that you feel the books are going to be helping your team with? I would say definitely the culture and the mindset. Uh, because culture is what, what we've been talking about all these years within our team. And we, we have built a really good culture. culture. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing that made us come here where we are and uh you know we we know what we're doing we know the reason we've been doing that because we we represent the whole state and we gotta show respect to it and then the mindset we we just want to be competitive you know we don't we don't like losing uh for example when we when we lost to to long beach you know coach charlie told us that i don't i don't really care about losing a game i just care about how you react after the game. And that's, that, that's the thing, like how, how we react, how we face a failure and uh, how we move on from that. I completely agree. It, it's just, um, you know, how you respond and yeah. how do you have poise yeah. and how do you just get better? And in the books, you know, I talk about sustaining success and the two big things there is to really try to outdo what you've done, try to be faster, stronger, smarter, better than you were the previous year. And the second thing is to really not take anyone or anything for granted. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, exactly. Maintaining success is the toughest. It's, it's, it's really difficult because, you know, as soon as you get to the top, everyone is coming for you, you know. And uh, I had an interview earlier this year and they asked me, Okay, you know, you won last year. Uh, so are you going to change anything? Are you going to keep it the same? And I told them, of course, we're going to change things because if we keep doing the same thing, someone will catch up to us and they will beat us eventually. So we will get better. We have to get better in order to win again. So, Dimi, when you guys won the first national championship and then you repeated last year, what are some little details that you're focused on to being better than you were the previous year? So it was uh, it was really different than the first championship last year's championship because we were half of the lineup was different because we graduated so many players like Rado Parapunov, Patrick Gassman, Colton Cowell, and Gates Worsley. They all graduated, so it was a really different team than the team that won at first. But uh, we felt that we, we are good enough to win again, you know, and uh, we work hard. Uh, it wasn't a perfect season, but uh, we had to face adversity a lot. But we kept working and we kept believing that we could win the championship. And uh, as soon as we made the tournament, we, we gave everything we had and uh, we won eventually. Oh, we're so proud of that. I mean, I'm, I've been, I know Coach Charlie for many years and, you know, he's, he's been really building this culture of excellence for over 10 years with his teams. And I'm so happy that he was able to really reach the pinnacle. And the challenge now is to really stay at that pinnacle at the top of the mountain. And I want to ask you about how hard is it? Okay, to really know that when you're playing every game, everybody expects you guys to win. How, what is your mindset like in that situation? Personally, I like this, this pressure because uh, I'm really competitive and I like when, when people have expectations for me. It, it gives me like, it makes me more focused and uh, I perform better. And I believe for all the guys in the team too, uh, we, we are, we are competitors and, uh, expectations are going to be there all the time. And, uh, yeah, I think everyone agrees with what I said that we, we, we like it. It might not seem good, but we like it. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you, you know, as a coach, and you know, in my books, I, I, there's a part where I talk about welcoming adversity, looking forward to challenges because it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So some of us will experience deeper levels of adversities, but when you prepare and when you're looking forward to those challenges, it's so, it's so much better because now you go out there and you want to show everybody how good you guys can play, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and especially when you meet those expectations, it's the best feeling ever and proving people wrong you know, with adversity. It's, uh, it's, a, it's such a nice feeling. Now, now, Dimi, congratulations. You guys just won the Big West Championship. I mean, that was absolutely terrific. And now you're preparing to try to win the third consecutive national championship. What are the guys feeling like, you know, now that the Big West Championship is finished and we have some time to prepare for the national championship, hopefully our third? You know, uh, at the beginning of the season, our two goals were to win the Big West Championship, the Conference Championship, and the NCAA Championship. And, you know, we had to look at the Big West uh, Championship first. And as soon as we, we won it uh, two days ago, we we're just focusing on the tournament. And uh, everyone is so locked in. Uh, we have practice tomorrow. And I already talked with some of the guys, and we are, we are all so excited. We're looking forward to it. Now, Dimi, I want to ask you some specific things about when you're playing in the volleyball match. Now, spiking. I mean, you're, it's inc- I love watching you spike. I mean, you really get up there. I mean, you get some air. And Dimi, what do you focus on? What's in your mind just before Jakob sets the ball to you and just before you're going to spike it? So as soon as the 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 other team serves the ball. I just hope that Jakob sets me the ball every time. But uh, yeah, Jakob is a great setter, and uh, I just try to to get the kill every every chance I have. You know, I'm an opposite. That's that's what I should do. I should be doing, and uh, yeah, try to avoid the block, work with the block. Uh, yeah, it's uh, there are so many things. Now my follow up to that, Dimi, is okay. Just before you make contact, are you are you aware of where the blocks will be or are you trusting your instincts or are you making an adjustment right at the last second? What are what are you thinking right at that moment? OK, it's a combination of things. Uh, you got you have to be aware of where the block the block is, of course, like you got to see it before you hit the ball and then you got to trust your instinct to. And then I believe the most important is uh, scouting, you know, what's in film before the, every game, what the other team uh, does when blocking, like all the micro moves that they've been doing on the blog. Uh, it's a combination of uh, all these things. So how often do you watch video to really study the tendencies of your opponents? So I watch the video every day of every practice, after every practice. And uh, I watch my movements and, uh, you know, what I can do better, what I can improve. And for the games, we watch videos. Uh, we watch video two times with the team before every game. And I watch one by myself just to see the, the blockers of the other team, like how they respond to different situations, like one-on-one or triple block. And, uh, yeah, it helps me a lot, to be honest. So, Dimi, I mean, when, you, when you guys are... I mean, spiking and killing the ball. I mean, and your opponents are doing the same. When you're like digging it up, does it hurt? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, sometimes, sometimes. But uh, most of the times, like, we, we got used to it because we play volleyball since we were so, so young. Uh, you get used to it eventually, but sometimes it still hurts. Yeah. Now, Dimi, I want to ask you about serving. So before, even in tennis, I I try to coach my players to have a serving routine to deepen their mental focus. What what do you think about as you're going through your routine before serving? Okay, my routine before serving is uh, I bounce the ball five times. 
uh, I spike the ball while I'm walking to the service line. And then be right before the serve, I just visualize that where I'm going to serve and how fast it's going to be, if it's going to be a slower serve. And then I just go up, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's a good toss. And then I just hit the ball. <laughs> and you usually hit the ball really solid on that serve. <laughs> now, Dimi, what, what, looking back on your college career at the University of Hawaii, what would you say has been the biggest highlight so far? Definitely the 2022 National Championship game. Definitely. Like, there are so many highlights, but I believe that that was my goal since I, before I even came here to, is to, was to win a National Championship. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for the next one, to be honest. But so far, it's last year's. So what stood out to you in last year's National Championship? What were some things that, that you'll remember forever? Oh, mostly because no one expected us to win. You know, everyone was saying, uh, this team is good, but Hawaii is not, it's not what it used to be. And uh, yeah, we've been hearing that the whole year, last year. And uh, it was really rewarding when we won the championship. And uh, after facing all the adversity and proving all these people wrong, that was the, the main reason. Now, what would let's go the opposite way now. So, what would you say has been the toughest part of your college career at the University of Hawaii? I would say, uh, you know, transitioning from Europe to the United States, of course, is difficult. But I would say uh, probably my injury during my sophomore year. I had an injury. I dislocated my ankle and I had to do surgery. So I sat out the whole year. And uh, I was really worried about my career because of what the doctors told me. It was uh, pretty serious. And uh, yeah, that was, the, that was the moment. Well, you know, that's the low point right there. And, and I talk yeah. in the books about setbacks or opportunities for comebacks. And you definitely made a major impressive comeback after that injury. And Dimi, everybody wants to know this important question right now. Yeah. What are your favorite things to eat in Hawaii? Definitely chicken katsu and poke. Uh, these are my, my two, but chicken katsu, I love chicken katsu. Uh, ever since I, I've been here, my, my first day, I've been eating so much. Well, you're definitely local. You guys all are local now. And what, what are some things that you really love to do in Hawaii outside of volleyball? Oh, we love going out, going to the beach with most of the teammates and uh, go hiking, you know, spend time together, uh, go out downtown. But yeah, we, we, we're doing so many things, but We've been all together all the time. That's the, that's the difference about us. when I talk about culture. Like, we're all best friends. Everything we do, everyone is there on the team. So that's, uh, that's amazing. Dimi, what I also enjoy is, I mean, everybody on the team seems like they matter. And whether you're on the, in the starting lineup or you're not, I mean, the guys who are cheering for you, I mean, they're literally cheering for you. They're, they're feeling every serve, every block, every kill. I mean, how does that make you feel where you're on not just a team, but a really special team? Yeah, everyone is important. That's why it's called a team sport. Because, yeah, you know, we play six, seven, eight players that we play during a game. But how do we practice through the whole week and through the whole year without all the guys? you know, serving the ball to us, hitting the ball, blocking us most of the times. It's just, it's a team sport and everyone is really important. And we, we do know that and uh, we, we really appreciate it as a team. Now, Dimi, I want to ask you about strengths and weaknesses. Um, obviously, it's important to maybe not have any weaknesses, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you might have strengths. I, I What I say is, when somebody's on a team, they make the team because of their strengths. And for me as a coach, I want to make the player's strength stronger. 
What mm -hmm. are what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I agree. Every player has weaknesses. Uh, and yeah, of course, you have to, to work on your weaknesses, but it's really difficult to be perfect. Not only in sports and volleyball, but in life in general. So you just focus, you have to focus on improving your weaknesses and, you know, building up your strengths. And how is volleyball, how is sports in general helping to prepare you for life? Oh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. I'm glad that my parents uh, got me into volleyball and sports because there are so many things you can learn just by being a member of a team. You know, you're learning about how to take care of your teammates, you know, how to be respectful, how to be humble. There are just so many things. And the most important thing for me is that, you know, sports, team sports, just create lifelong relationships and friendships. You know, like I'm going to be friends for life with all, all my teammates here, which is just amazing. I'm just blessed. No, oh, I, I love hearing that. And Dimi, when you reflect back on your life, your short life so far, what's a big valuable lesson you've learned? I would say just uh, say my opinion more, say what I think at the right time. You know, don't be afraid to, to talk. You know, because uh, people may judge you. I would say that would be the, the most important one. Nice. Now, after the national championship tournament, you made the announcement that you're going to be turning pro. Um, what league are you focused on playing pro in? Are you, and is beach volleyball an option as well? No, beach volleyball is not an option for me. Unfortunately, I am... Uh, I'm not really good at beach volleyball, but uh, for me, I don't have, I haven't decided yet because obviously we have the tournament and uh, it's under the NCAA rules, but I want to go somewhere that I can play, you know, I can be in the court, I can have playing time because that's, that's what I enjoy the most. That's what I enjoy. And, uh, you know, that's practicing and, you know, yeah, you might go to a better league. But that's not what I enjoy. I, I like playing. I always like playing. And uh, that's the biggest thing for me. Dimi, you are a role model to so many youngsters that you have no idea about. So many, so many young boys and girls, they look up to you. What, what is your advice to these youngsters? Just don't be afraid and uh, get out of your comfort zone. You know, that's what I did. And uh, that's what I learned that that's the only way you can develop as a person and uh, as an athlete, too. Like I came all the way from Greece. I was so scared, I'm telling you. But it was the best decision I've made in my life. Dimi, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. You won two national championships. I say that that you've achieved greatness. And greatness can be defined in many ways. How do you define greatness? Just getting better every day. Keep improving. And uh, that's how I define greatness. Just and, getting better and improving. And, you know, you know I want to add on to that, too, is I think it's the impact that you have on others because of your character and your teammates' yeah. character. It's not just about improving yourself, but how you do it, and then the character where it just impacts so many people around you. Would you agree? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I can see that right, right here in Hawaii, like, we have su such a big impact to the, to the whole islands. And uh, we, we don't realize that. We don't realize that. And we're, we're just blessed. We are so humble about all that and uh yeah we we want to thank everyone for helping us go through this well dimmy it's been a pleasure having you on the show today you are a great person i mean i love your character i love your work ethic your mindset and we're all cheering for you wishing you the best on the hopefully the third consecutive national championship thank you very much Rusty. thank you i appreciate it and thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble.
I hope that Dimi and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.